Hi Nigel here with The Drive Wire and I have the 2021 Toyota Avalon but this one is a TRD. Now typically Avalons have this reputation of taking you very comfortably and slowly to your early bird dinner followed by some exciting bingo. And since everybody deci decided a few years ago that they wanted to buy a crossover or an SUV, sedan sales have been dying. So this one actually only sells, did sell in 2020 around 20,000 examples. I couldn't find the numbers for the exact TRD, so that's all Avalon. So I can imagine they didn't sell too many of these. This is a pretty rare car. Compare that with the RAV4, which sold about 460,000 units in 2020 and you'll see where the problem lies for sedans. So the big question is, is it any good? I mean, in its standard form, it's sort of a little bit lazy, it's comfortable, super quiet inside, but when you add some TRD bits to it, it actually livens this car up more than I had expected. And as a bonus, it actually looks really cool. So what exactly is it? Well, obviously there is an appearance package. There is lots of, glossy black plastic. There's this piece of plastic along here. There's these pretty nice looking 19 inch matte black alloy wheels with these Michelin primacy all season tires. I kind of wish that this tester had had the optional Michelin Pilot Sports. I think it's another $1,900. I would probably want to spend that on this, but a little bit more on that when we actually test drive the car later on. The other thing they've done is the car is lowered by 0.6 of an inch, got stiffer springs all around to keep it on the road a little better, and active torque vectoring to make it go around the bends a little better. Now it is a front driver, so that does limit it somewhat. I think if this car was rear wheel drive, it would be even more fun than it is. And I say fun because this is actually a fun car. The other thing you can get apart from the multiple TRD badges, and they are everywhere in the middle of the wheels, on the seats, just about everywhere. I haven't really counted them all up, but you do get these uprated brakes. These are two piston calipers at the front. Obviously the calipers are painted red, so you can see that it's a lot more sporty. And I think the overall hook is actually really good. I specifically like this particular color. There's actually only three colors that you can buy. This one has the black roof with, with a sunroof, obviously black wheels, black trim. I think it actually looks really pretty good. And this one, including destination, comes to around $45,000. The only option on this car is the upgraded JBL sound system, it comes in for around $1,700. So from the front, it's pretty aggressive. It's got this glossy splitter, super glossy, sort of almost Lexus-like grille. Actually kind of nice uh, LEDs here. And I think it looks pretty aggressive. I found that most people who I come up behind on the freeway seem to get out of the way. I think they maybe think that it's a Lexus, but it isn't. It's a lot cheaper. And of course it is based on the ES350. It's essentially the same engine and, and chassis and everything that the ES350 rides on. In my opinion, the best view is from the back. I got this nice little uh, rear spoiler again in MAC black. Apologies, we had some rain, so it's, uh, it's a tad dirty. Uh, Avalon across this, these lights across the back here and the uh, reflectors. And then you've got these really cool looking exhausts. This is actually a TRD cat back exhaust system. Actually makes this car sound pretty good. In the back, you get about 16 cubic feet of space. Uh, I actually found this uh, net underneath the carpet. It uh, comes in handy for, for groceries, but in the bottom here, you have got um, absolutely no spare wheel. I don't know why I bother showing that anymore because most cars don't seem to have a spare wheel at all. But anyway, 16 cubic feet of space. It would be nice if it was a hatch, sort of like the Arteon, but it isn't, so regular old trunk it is. Under the hood you've got the 3.5 liter V6 engine that Toyota uses across multiple cars in its range. This one has the, exactly the same power output as the Avalon and the V6 Camry. It's 301 horsepower, 267 foot-pounds of torque driven through an eight-speed traditional automatic gearbox. It's good for a zero to 60 run in around 6.1 seconds, but you got to keep the torque up there because it doesn't kick in until 
higher up in the rev range, but it's not bad. It's actually a pretty entertaining drive. So the first thing you notice when you get in the back is it has red seat belts. Go faster seat belts. But once you get situated, these seats are actually nicely comfortable. They're soft, they're supportive. Uh, couldn't ask for anything better really as a rear seat passenger. And you get a little bit of power in the back here. There's a couple of USB ports and two vents. You also can sit in the middle seat. Uh, headroom is just about okay here. But if I get into the middle seat, if I'm the unlucky person, I've got a little bit of headroom. But all in all, it's actually not bad. This seat is fairly well pushed to the back. And uh, yeah, these seats are leather. They've got a little bit of a sort of a Alcantara, sort of a fake suede trim there. It's actually pretty nice. It really is. So I can't really fault the interior as in the back, the front seats are comfortable. They've got decent bolstering. If you're really pushing on in the turns, you could do with a little bit more bolstering here uh, in the side. But other than that, solid materials. It's a Toyota. I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. Now the, the downside is, is that it is somewhat old. Uh, technology wise, it does give you um, some room in here for some stuff and then it has two uh, regular charging ports and then one fast one which is pretty decent for a car that's been around for quite some time so as far as the entertainment screen is concerned it is old uh, it is touchscreen amazingly it also has some physical buttons but it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. Um, you can connect your phone pretty easily. There's some physical buttons for tuning and for power. So if you hit menu, it's not exactly the most up-to-date graphics, but it's pretty, it's pretty fast. It's set up and it slowly makes its way and then you can do Bluetooth, voice, etc. Really, it definitely needs an upgrade. Down below, easy to use HVAC controls. It's got heated seats, but no cooled seats. This is a miss in my opinion. Now, I'm not sure if you can get the cooled seats in the higher level trims. There's some higher level trims that are a little bit more expensive than this, but particularly in Southern California where it gets quite hot and, and other Southern states here in the US, that I think is a miss. Heated seats are not doing me any good right now. So I sort of like this center console area. It's a, there's a small stubby little gear shifter, uh, two different cup holders. So this car comes with drive modes. It sets off automatically in eco. Annoyingly, you have to change it every single time. Uh, normal is pretty good for tooling around. And then sport mode seems to change the shift pattern. It gets a little bit more aggressive. It holds on all the way to the red line. In fact, it, pretty, it does a pretty good job and it needs to because torque doesn't kick in to higher in the rev range. So there's that problem. And then ahead of the driver, they're pretty standard. No fancy digital gauges, just your standard analog, speedo, taco, uh, pretty standard stuff. You can scroll through some of these menus and look at your uh, distance to empty, uh, averaging 17.7 .7 miles per gallon. It's not particularly economical. And then I usually, usually leave the speed in the middle. Shows the distance to empty right there, outside temp, etc. It's It's functional. It does what it needs to do. This car's saving grace is, and I've said this before, it's actually quite fun to drive. All right, we're all strapped in. Let's go take this Camry TRD for a drive. So I have it in sport mode, which is the only mode to be in. Now just driving around town, slower speeds. The steering is nice. It has a nice weighty feel to it. The steering wheel itself is a little dated, but we could get over that. It feels good in your hands. In sport mode, this is the biggest downside. I wish it were rear wheel drive. Because if you really stomp on it from a stop, it just chirps its front wheels. Now these are the all season Michelin Primacies. 
they don't quite have the out and out grip that a, a set of summer tires would would offer that is an option on this car and i would probably want to option it with those and forget about the jbl sound system but it revs i mean it's a, a naturally aspirated v6 it's the same engine that's in the it's in the uh, es350 and it's it's nice it's pretty good makes a pretty good sound too now it's a lot less boomy than it is in the Camry TRD. This has better sound deadening, I think. The Avalon typically attracts the older buyer. See, that's where the traction control kicked in. I put too much in it on a turn and these, these Michelins just won't, don't give you enough grip. And in a rear wheel drive car, I think you'd have a better chance. You'd have a better handling balance. I kind of like the way it drives. It's pretty planted. Brakes are really good. really have to massage the throttle a little bit to get the best hookup. Once it hooks up though, definitely enough uh, on board to put a smile on your face. Passing is fairly easy. Um, just got past that slower vehicle. Wasn't too much of a problem. Gotta make sure you keep the engine on the boil because of the sort of slight lack of torque. Definitely above 3,000 RPM is a, is a sort of a sweet spot for that torque to be available. Let's turn around here. Handles turns really quite well, I must say. I feel like ultimately being a front driver, it will understeer, but Seems like up to that point, it's pretty stable. I like this section because they're kind of tight twisties. It handles pretty nicely. Engine definitely feels like it has enough power. Hangs onto the revs, changes up. Right on the red line. Sounds good doing it. Tell you what, it's nice to be back in a sedan. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with this car. It's, it's fun to drive, an Avalon that is fun to drive. While at the same time, you know, you could take it to the shops, put it in normal mode, the suspension's nice and compliant, it's quiet, and of course, it's got red seat belts. Very important. Helps it go faster. All right, well, what do we think? Well, I don't think many people are gonna buy an Avalon TRD based on the social demographics of the sort of people that would buy this car. However, I applaud the efforts of Toyota to even build this car with the TRD mods, and it's actually pretty fun to drive. There are many other places I could spend my $41,000, $42,000 on. It probably wouldn't be here, but I actually kind of like driving this car. It's got some character to it, a little bit of soul. The engine sounds good. The steering's good. It brakes well. It does everything you need to do. And the best part is it's a sedan and it's still alive. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Appreciate it. Go ahead and like, please subscribe to the channel. Hey, let me know if anyone has one of these out there. I haven't seen any other ones on the road anywhere. And we'll catch you next time for another video.